All right, now that you've got nice and comfortable and sat back down, let's stand together and let's sing together our opening song. Come, now is the time to worship. Go ahead, y'all. All right, click it one time there, bud, and the music will start. Should, hopefully. I hope so, anyways. Let's see. Yep, there it comes. All right, up just a little bit. Good. Can y'all hear it over there? A little bit more. Um, now is the time to worship. A little bit more up. Um, now is the time to give your heart. And come just as you are to worship. Come just as you are before your God. And come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. But still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Oh, now is the you are great. Lord, may we worship you today, dear God. Speak to our hearts. Guide us. Show us your will in our lives. And Lord God, to you be all the glory this day. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. And since we are in our patriotic time today, thinking of those who fought for our freedom and died for our freedom, let's stand together and let's sing a couple of patriotic songs. My country tis of thee and America the beautiful. Let's stand and sing together. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I see. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. Our fathers, God, to thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God our King. And America the beautiful. Oh. 
Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. And crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Oh, beautiful for patriot dream that sees me on the years. Thine alabaster city's clean, undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Amen. Stood beside his daddy and watched the soldiers marching by. It was Memorial Day, and he wondered why there were tears in daddy's eyes. Later, they laid flowers beside a monument of stone. He said, Son, my daddy went to fight, but he didn't make it. Fallen, but not forgotten. Yes, he was a hero. He stood so tall and forever we will remember with honor and glory. Where they were born for the rice paddies of Vietnam, Iraq, and Desert Storm. They were soldiers in Korea, World War I and World War II. They paid the price, and some gave their lives when they fought for me and you. Not forgotten. Yes, they were the heroes. They stood so tall. And forever we will remember with honor and glory. a blessing, the freedom has a price. We must remember those who paid it with their lives. So remember the fallen, they're not forgotten. Yes, they were the And forever we will remember with honor and glory they gave it all. Falling but not forgotten as they were the heroes they stood so tall. 
Greater love is no one than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. Now, before we get started, I want to make a, um, a real specific or have a real specific understanding. There are two days that we celebrate that are very similar. One is Memorial Day, the other is Veterans Day. And I think it's very important, especially for those of you that have military backgrounds or family in military. I was not in the military, but I was an army brat when I was a kid. Um, but for some of you, I believe you understand the difference. There is a time that we honor those that have served in the military. And now, right up front, I would love for those, if you have served in the military, if you would stand for us just for a moment, if you've served in the military. All right. We've got some right here. Let's give them a hand. Thank y'all. Thank you so much for your service. But Memorial Day is something a little bit different. Memorial Day is a day that we celebrate those who served. Just one second. Okay. But Memorial Day is for those that serve but did not make it home from service. There are many that that died in war, defending our freedom. There are others that died in in other things. There are many that, that, that die in training exercises and other things, but they are there to serve. And it is them we want to think about this morning. So I'll tell you this morning, if you would, if you have someone in your family that died in military service, during military service. I know it might be a little bit, little bit of a confusion, but if you would, just speak their name out. Donald. Any others? Mm-hmm. Others. You know, something we are getting to that time. I remember when I was young, when I was very young as a child, I remember the pastor standing up and saying something similar to this. And I remember it going on for a long time. Y'all remember that? Closer to those times. Uh, for me, um, I was born in 74, so I wasn't really much around during, during Vietnam, but I was, as a child, it was still remembered. And it was still very close. Uh, Some of my friends at school, older friends at school, had parents that that died in Vietnam. Others were grandparents and and beyond. And back then, too, we were there were many that still remembered World War II and and even World War I. So many things. These days we have Iraq and Desert Storm and, and, and all of the more modern conflicts and things that have gone on. But y'all, greater love hath no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friend. Why is it that we honor these people? You know something, in in today's political realms, talking about the Republicans and the Democrats and the Independents and the Bull Moose. Is there any Bull Moose party left? No, I don't think so. But anyways, and all of the different parties and all these that went on out there. You know, we talk about this idea of, of what the intention behind things are. If somebody wants to, wants to find out something or, or wants to stand against something like abortion, you've got some that say the reason we do that is because we want to stand for life. While another person says, no, the reason you want to do that is because you want to stand against women's rights. Right? If we named most of us here, we would say that we are pro-life. But many others out there would call us anti-abortion. People try to determine for themselves what your intentions are behind what you believe or what you try to do. Now, I'm the first to recognize and understand that there are different intentions. And there are many, some of the names that we called here today, I bet if, 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 they could, if they could be called here today to give testimony, to say, why did you go and serve? There may be different reasons. There may be many different reasons. But we would have to hear it from their mouths, right? So there are those that go to war for different reasons. 
But the reality is, is, one way or the other, the vast majority of those in our country that serve, they serve because they love this country. They serve because they desire to stand for freedom and against those ideas and philosophies in this world that want to deny us our freedom. Our freedom to do what? Our freedom to love and honor our God as we see fit, right? And there are other things. There are many things that we as Christians stand for for various reasons. But these soldiers went for different reasons, but all went to protect the freedoms that we have. They all went to protect and love their families that they left behind, right? And that is why we honor them. That's why we honor them. I want to read my scripture that we'll be going through today. Uh, Joshua, click one more there, buddy. This is John 15, 9 through 13, and it says, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love is no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, this morning I ask that you bless, Lord. Lord, this reading of your word. Lord, the interpretation of your word, dear God, as we preach. Lord, touch the hearts of your people. Lord God, may you give us a strong sense, dear God, of national pride, dear God, and a love for our freedom. Because, Lord, our freedom allows us to serve. But, Lord, always in recognition, Lord, that whatever we give, you were the one that gave first. Lord, God bless us today, we ask. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. All right, Joshua, click that first slide there, buddy. What I want to do is I want to take this and I want to go through it. I just want to make a few points about the scripture passage that's laid before you here. Uh, now, who's speaking here? Jesus, that's right. And he starts off by saying this. He says, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Abide in my love. Now, first of all, the greatest thing to me, the thing that I love the most, is this idea that the, at the very first, we know that the Father loved him, right? But he says, just as the Father loved him, he also loves us. Just as the Father was willing to give his one and only Son, just as the Father was, loved us so much that he gave us a beautiful world and gave it to us. Just as he loved us so much that he would come down in the cool of the evening and walk with Adam and walk with Eve and talk with them and spend time with them every day. Just as the Father loved Jesus, he also loves us. This is a greater love, I think, than we can ever imagine. And he says, and abide in my love. What does that abide mean? Abide is... is is an interesting word. Um, let's see here. I'm clicking on something. There we go. This word abide, it means accept or act in accordance with or dwell or live in. Click that next slide there, Joshua. Let's see as he continues this thought. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. So just as the Father loves him, he loves you. And just as he abided in his Father's love by following his commandments, we too can abide in his love by following his commandments. The idea of abide is the place that we dwell. Some of you know the example that I've given. I've given it on Wednesday nights. I think I've given it on a Sunday morning too. Yes, I have a couple weeks back. But anyways, this idea that we, we think of life like this. We think that we're just walking through life and if we do something good, God blesses us. If we do something bad, God zaps us. 
and that's the way life is. But it is not like that. The Bible doesn't describe the word, I mean, the world like that. The Bible describes it in such a way that as I stand here, I can be in God's blessing. If I'm standing where he wants me to be, within his commandments, in his, in his dwelling with him, excuse me, dwelling with him, then I am with him and I am receiving blessing. So everything I touch is blessed. And even when something bad comes in and comes against me, I still have a foundation. I still have a, the love of the Father and he will get me through anything that comes against me. But sadly, even as Christians, we tend to try to step over to one side or the other. We step out of his commandments. We step out of his love and the place of dwelling with him. And we begin to do the things of the world and think like the world. Our intentions become something different. And it is not he. It is not he who has stepped away but us. I remember the joke a couple of weeks ago about the older man, the woman in the pickup truck. She's sitting over here. He's sitting over here. She said, you know, we used to sit right up on each other way back when we loved each other. And he said, well, I hadn't moved. Well, it's the same thing with God. I told that joke a couple weeks ago. But same thing with God. That's the example. That's, that's where we are. God does not move. We choose to move out of his blessing. We choose to go into think like the world. If the scripture says this, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, that all need salvation, all must come to him or suffer the consequences of hell for eternity, many times, many will walk over here and say, yeah, but I live a good life. What did the scripture say about living a good life? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But we step over here and we say, yeah, but, but God, lo God loves everybody. God's not going to send me to hell. What does the scripture say? Back over here in the scriptures, it says that, yes, God loves you and he's provided a way of salvation, but if you choose not to accept that way, you condemn yourself to hell. It's us that step out, that step away from him. But it is dwelling here in his commandments. This is where we receive blessing. Now, sorry, I'm stepping out of his blessing. No, not really. But here's one key I want you to understand, okay? What, some, what might be going on in some of your hearts... Is that, well, if he, truly bled, if he truly loved me, he wouldn't put all these, you know, you know, his love is not unconditional. He only loves me if I do these things. Well, the thing is, is the commandments that he gives, I'm going to make this statement, then we're going to talk about it in just a minute, a little more. But the commandments that he gives, they're not commandments for his blessing and his good. They are a commandment for your blessing and your good. So the question comes up, well, what are these commandments we're talking about? What commandment? He says here that I'm supposed to abide in his love by following his commandments. Well, what are his commandments? Well, we caught all kinds of commandments that can come to our minds from the Old Testament, right? But he's actually not talking about that here. He's got a specific commandment that he's going to lay out. And it's that commandment that if we dwell in that, or excuse me, or we abide, if we abide in that commandment, then we will be abiding in his love, in his blessing. So what is that commandment? Well, let's hold off just a second. Let's first of all answer another question, okay? First, why is he commanding this? I want to answer why he's commanding this first, all right? Joshua? Oh, you got it. Never mind. That was it. 9 through 13, that was it. Go back one. Oh, there it is. Wait. Wait, let me see. No, one more. There you go. You had it right the first time. I was wrong. Man, I'll tell you. Whew. Verse 11. These things, listen to this. He goes on to say, these things I have spoken to you. What? That if you follow my commandments, then you can abide in my love. Just as he followed the Father's commandments and abide in his love. He's saying, you can abide in my love if you follow my commandments. These things I've spoken to you, he says, that my joy... That my joy may be fulfilled? Is that what it says? No. That my joy may remain where? In you. And that your joy may be full. If I'm in the kitchen and we've been cooking and Lindy Rose comes riding by and I say, Lindy Rose, don't touch that stove, baby. Am I saying that for my own betterment and my own blessing? 
or for the betterment and blessing of my child. This is the desire of the Father. The commands he gives us are not commands for him. He does not say, hmm, how do I want them to live? Hmm, let them do this and let them do this. No, he doesn't consider things that way. He looks down and he says, these are my children. These are the ones that I love. So what wisdom can I give them? What can I say to them that will bless them, that will help them to live in blessing? Do you see the difference there? Do you see what he's saying? The world will tell you that the Bible is nothing but a bunch of rule, it's a bunch of rules and rule book. No, it's a loving father who desires the best, the best for his children for eternity. So these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Okay, so the commandments are there so that our joy, they're for our betterment, there's for our joy to be filled. But what commandments? Is he talking about specific commandments or is he talking about all the commandments? Guess what? He's talking about specific commandments. Let's click on that next slide and we'll, we'll find out what those commandments are. He says, this is my commandment. This is the one that he's talking about, okay? He's specifically saying, for you to, uh, to abide in my love, just as I abide in the Father's love. The Father had a commandment for me, and he accomplished that. Now, I have a commandment for you. And you want to abide in my love? You want to abide in this commandment? This is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. So we're not talking about the Ten Commandments? Well, yeah, we sort of are. Because we're to love one another. So does that mean that we will not cheat on our wives or husbands? Yeah, if we love them, correct? Does it mean that we won't lie about other people? Yeah, because we love them and lying hurts them. Does it mean that we won't steal? Yeah, because, because we love people and, and we don't want to take what is theirs and what they receive joy from. Do you see the point I'm making here? When they asked Jesus, what did he say was the greatest commandment to first of all, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. That means everything you got, love him. But then he says, and like unto it, just as much God wants you just as much to love him, just as much he wants you to love each other. And like unto it, love each other. Or love your neighbor as yourself, right? That's what Jesus said. That is the commandment. This is what he's talking about. It's that same thought, that same idea right here. The commandment is to dwell in this place, to abide in this place of his love and his commandment, is to be like him and to love others. And when you love others, is it hard not to harm them? Do you want to harm your children? Do you want to harm your wife or your, your, your grandparents or your mom and daddy? Now, we know in this world things are corrupt and there are hard circumstances in families. But think about the ideal family that God created, the way God created it to be. Would you want to harm the ones you loved? Never. So he says, listen, if you want to abide in me, if you want to dwell here in my blessing, you want to dwell in the place that I have for you? Then live a life of love. That is my commandment. And how much love are we talking about here? Okay. I mean, I, I love Miss Linda, but you know, I mean, how much love are we talking about? Well, it says here, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. So what does that mean? I, I need to somehow figure out some way to die for Miss Linda? No. It says to lay down your life. And the general conduct text would be understood that if a shooter, like happened this last couple of weeks there in Texas, if a shooter walked in those doors and I jumped in front of Miss Linda to save her, I think that's something that I should do. And that's one thing, and I hope that would show my love. But what if a shooter does not walk through that door? How then can I lay down my life for Miss Linda? Can I call her and say, hey, how are you doing? 
Can I go to God on your behalf? Can I look and see maybe when she doesn't seem so happy? You don't mind me using you, do you? Okay, good. Can I look at her and say, you don't seem, you, you seem like something wrong today. What can I do to help you? Can I look at Miss Linda and say, Miss Linda, the way you did that the other day was wrong. Can I help you to make it right? Right? You see what we're talking about here? We're talking about giving our lives for one another in death if necessary. That's why we honor our soldiers. But can we not also live for one another? Give our time, our talents to one another. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Joshua, you can click on that last one there. This morning, I'm going to give a time of invitation. Ladies, if y'all would come up for that. I'm going to give it a time of invitation. And here's just simply what I invite you to go to God with. Okay? How can you abide in His love? How can you begin to lay down your life for one another? Some of us have lives here at church. We have work. We have family at home. We have extended family. We have our extracurricular stuff that we enjoy doing all of these things, right? We've got lots of things that go on in our lives. But how can we begin to lay down our lives for those people that we come in contact with? Is it maybe that we can serve one another in the church? Is it maybe at work? Instead of us just talking about the ball game, which there's nothing wrong with that, or talking about the politics or the things of the day, instead we turn and say, you know something, I was at church this week and, and uh, Wednesday night we were talking about this and that and the other. What do you think about that? And have a conversation about the things of God. Maybe even with someone who doesn't know God. Maybe that'll be open up an opportunity to introduce them to him, right? But we get shy, don't we? We get nervous about witnessing and about, about these things. But greater love can, we, can no one have than for us to give our lives. To give who we are and from who we are for those that are around us, those that we consider our friends. To share with them the love of the Father. If necessary, to take a bullet for them. But one way or the other, to serve one another. 